The new let function is part of the logical group of functions in Excel. And what let basically allows you to do is assign names to calculation results inside a formula. So if you find yourself writing the same expression multiple times in a formula, let basically allows you to name the expression and then Excel will calculate the result using the name. So not only is this a great time saving function, but it also makes your formulas easier to read and understand as you don't have to remember what a specific cell reference or range refers to because it's right there in the formula. So let's start out taking a look at the let syntax and also let's run through a couple of basic examples. So in cell A4, I'm just going to type in equals let. And you can see here the different arguments that we have for the let function. We have name one, name value one, calculation or name two. So name one and name one value are where we define the name and the value. And then the last thing we do is the calculation. And we could have numerous pairs of names and values in our formula. In fact, the let function supports up to 126 pairs. Now you might be listening to this thinking, okay, I kind of understand what you're saying there, but it doesn't really make sense. And that is completely understandable because this is one of those formulas that only makes sense when you see it in action. So let's take a look at a very basic example. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to assign a name to a variable. And for argument's sake, and because I'm not very good at thinking up variable names, I'm simply going to call this first one var, comma. Now I can assign a value to the word var. So if I assign the value 20 to this word, effectively the word var now represents 20. Now I could carry on going, adding other names and values, or I could perform a calculation using the variable that I've just set up. So if I now do a calculation, it might look something like this. I could say var plus 5. Now, what do you think the result of that calculation is going to be? We've stated that var equals 20. That is our variable. Those are our parameters. And now my calculation is var plus 5. So as we would expect, the result is 25 because we're just adding 20 to 5. So that's an example of a simple let just using one variable. Let's add another variable. So if var is equal to 20, let's add another variable. I'm going to say comma, and remember, our next argument is calculation or name two. So this time we're going to add another name and another name value. So let's say that x is attributed to the value 10. So now what I could do is I could modify my calculation at the end here, and I could do var divided by x. What result do you think I'm going to get? Well, I'm going to get a result of 2 because we're effectively doing 20 divided by 10. So hopefully you're getting the idea here. We set up a name, we attribute a number to that name, and we can set up 126 different pairs of names and variables in here if we want to. The last thing we do is we perform calculations using the variables that we've created. So everything is defined within one formula. Let's define a third variable. So let's double click to edit the formula. We're going to click after the second variable and this variable we're going to name y and this is going to be 5. I'm now going to change my calculation to do var divided by x and I wanted to do this part of the formula first. So we're going to put it in brackets and then I want it to plus y. Let's hit enter. We get a result of 7. So we're doing 20 divided by 10 which gives us 2 and then we're adding 5. Let's take a look at another example of using the let formula. 
So if we scroll down again, we just have a basic table that shows some employee names and we have their salary. And each of these employees is going to get a bonus of 20%. So this is a fairly simple calculation. We can just simply do a sum and we multiply the salary by the bonus and we need to make that absolute and then we add the salary onto the bonus. Let's close the bracket and hit enter and we get our result of 54,000. So how could we use let to perform this calculation? Well, let's click in the cell underneath and I'm going to do this up in the formula bar and just show you a slightly different way to put together your calculations. Now, this formula bar isn't a set size. If you notice, if I hover my mouse over the bottom part of the formula bar, we get a double headed arrow. So if I click and drag this down, I get a much larger formula bar. And sometimes when you're putting together more complex formulas, it's really helpful to be able to lay them out in the formula bar and have different parts of the calculation on different lines. It just adds to the readability of your formulas. So let's go into let. Open the bracket. Now I'm going to declare my variables on the next line. So we need to press Alt Enter to move our cursor down. So let's declare our first variable. Well, what do I select first when I'm doing the sum calculation? I select the salary cell. So I'm just going to call this first variable salary. And salary is going to reference cell B17. What's the next part of my sum calculation? Well, we multiply the salary by the bonus. So the next variable that I'm going to declare and let's put it on a new line or enter is going to be the bonus. And the bonus is cell F15 and we need to press F4 to lock that. So now we've declared our two variables, we can perform our calculation. So Alt Enter to move on to the next line. Our calculation is going to be sum, open bracket, we're doing the salary and notice as I start to type it in, it comes up in Excel's IntelliSense. So I can simply press the tab key to select it. We want to multiply by the bonus. Again, it's come up, so tab key to select. And then we want to plus the salary again. Close the bracket and close off our let. So that is our calculation on the last line. Now take a look at the way that we've structured that. It makes it a lot easier to read. We have our function name on the first line. We then have our variables declared on lines two and three. And then at the bottom, we have our calculation. Let's hit enter and see if this works. And in fact, yes, it does. So now all I need to do is double click and I can copy that formula down. So hopefully now you're getting the idea as to how this let function works. Let's take a look at one last more complex formula. So let's move to our final worksheet. Now this data may look familiar to you. We did use this when we were looking at the filter function. I have some block names, we have the subject and we have the pass mark. So this might be information for students who took a test. And basically what I want to do is use the filter function to return the block, the subject and the pass mark based on the criteria that we have in the middle here. So currently, if I was using filter, I'd only want to see results where the block equals West and the subject equals English. So let's first just do this using the filter function and then we can see how we can convert that into a let. So let's type in equals filter. Our array, well, our array are the results that we want returned, which is pretty much everything in this table, comma. Now we need to specify what we want to include. So let's open a bracket. I want to include all results where the block equals West. So we need to select the block range and that needs to equal what we have in cell E3, F4 to lock. Let's close the bracket. We also want to return results where the subject is English. And because this is an AND calculation, we want to return both results. We're going to separate with an asterisk. Open the second bracket. 
select the subject range, and that needs to equal what we have in cell E7, F4 to lock. Let's close off our bracket, close off our filter, hit enter, and would you take a look at that? There are our results. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing, but we're going to set this up as a let instead. And this is where lets can be particularly useful, because if you take a look at this filter formula, notice lots of cell references in here. So we can effectively replace these cell references with more meaningful names using let. And this is particularly useful if you have repeating cell references in your formula, because it means that you can declare the name for a particular cell reference and then just replace every time that cell reference occurs with the name. And not only does it make the formula a lot easier to read, it's a lot more efficient for Excel to calculate. So let's jump down to cell G9 and we're going to construct this as a let. Now I might need a bit more room here, so let's drag our formula bar down. So we're going to do this in the same format. We're going to start with our equals let. We're going to open a bracket and alt enter to move on to the first line. So now we want to declare our variables. Now the first thing we selected was our array, which is basically everything that we have in this table. So I'm going to call this array, let's just call it data. And then we can select the cell references, comma, alt enter to move to the next line. What do we then need to do? Well, we need to specify what we want to include in our filter. And the first thing is we want to include the block. So we're going to name the block range. So let's give it a name. We'll call it block, comma, and that means we're referring to this range just here, comma, alt, enter. Now, you don't necessarily have to name absolutely everything that you select in your calculations as a variable. For example, I might not want to name this cell just here where we have West. Now, I am going to do this just so you can really see what this formula looks like when we name everything. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename the block range. I'm going to call this block RNG just to make that very specific. And then the next variable we're going to call block and that's going to refer to this cell just here. And we're going to press F4 to lock that. Comma, let's move on to the next line, Alt, Enter. The next thing we need to declare is the subject just here. So let's say subject RNG is this range just here, comma, Alt, Enter. And again, if you need to, you can just drag this down to give yourself a little bit more room. And then our final variable to declare is just going to be the subject. And that is going to be this cell just here. And I'm going to press F4 to lock that. So those are all of our declared variables. We can now perform the calculation on the last line. So comma, alt, enter. So now it's time to put together our calculation. So we want to do our filter, our array. Well, we've declared that as the data range comma, what do we now want to include? Well, the first thing to include, we want to select the block range, and that needs to equal whatever we have in the cell that we've called block. Asterix, our second piece of criteria, is the subject range, and that needs to equal the subject close our bracket, close off our filter. So let's just take a moment to review what we have in this calculation. We have the let function name on the first line. We then declare all of our variables and what they refer to, and then we do our calculation on the last line. So let's hit enter and see what we get. Now it's telling me it's found a typo in my formula and I think I've missed off a trailing bracket on the end here. So I'll say yes to accept the correction and take a look at that. We're getting exactly the same results. So our let is working really well. Now let's just check if we change this to east, let's see what happens. It still works. So hopefully that gives you an idea as to how you can use let and where it might be useful. I will say let is particularly useful if you have a large data set, if you have a complicated calculation, and particularly if you're recalling the same information over and over again in a formula.
It makes it a lot more efficient for Excel to calculate, and it makes the formulas a lot easier to read and understand. This video is part of our complete set of courses for Excel 2021 and Excel 365. To take a look at our courses, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see more Excel videos, click over there.